alongside Brett Tavo, author and packing greatness, a Chiefs book you can find on Amazon. Brett, Chiefs' first game here, short yardage situation, something that they did great two years ago, not so well last year, and this one not so good. Part of what led to a 21 20 loss at home to the Lions. Yeah, you know, there, there are, you know, usually in the NFL, you know, you, there are a handful of plays you go back and look at. And, and if the result would have been different, you know, it, it possibly swings the outcome of the game. This this was certainly one of them. And, and just as you said, they, they were so good in short yardage a couple of years ago. Um, and, you know, the last, you know, obviously this one game, small sample size this season, but I know they struggled with it last year. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll obviously dive into this play and see why. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're searching right now. It's same three guys in the middle where two years ago they were just pushing guys around. Uh, now they're kind of searching for answers here. And we can see here, uh, not only was it uh, a play call that didn't work, but some bad execution or some execution that didn't get handled. So let's break this thing down. Absolutely. So uh, the Chiefs stay in their, their 12 personnel set that, that they use a lot. You've got uh, – Bell, um, who, who's lined up under center as the quarterback, and, and I believe uh, that that's Noah Gray there um, on the right-hand side as an off-the-ball tight end. And then you've got Sky Moore um, standing in as a tight end, and then Roshi Rice there as the wing. So everybody, you've got all 11 offensive players right there, um, you know, compressed in, the, in that end zone view. Um, and they're going to run uh, – well, before I get to that, yeah, as you've got, um, you know, Telestrated there, the Lions are going to line up in a bare front, and this is a common uh, short yardage defense, not only in the NFL but all all levels of football. And the the, the um, you know the idea behind a bare front is to make it difficult to run inside, particularly zone schemes, makes it hard to double team and things like that. But you know, they, as you've got noted, they got nine players within two yards in the line of scrimmage. You've got a corner walk down on the side of, of Noah Gray. Um, a deep safety back there, and then another corner that's that's out the screen. So, I mean, they're obviously teed up, ready to stop anything short there. And this is where the line shows some pressure here. So, this is kind of where it seems to get wonky for the Chiefs. It does. So they're they're they they've got two linebackers, basically what what are called mugged or walked up in the a gap there. And, um, you know, that that's going to muddy the waters a little bit as we're going to see. Um, and the nose at the snap of the ball, his his job, he doesn't have any gap responsibility here. His job is to basically, um, you know, drive out vertically and knock the center back in the backfield. And then what you're going to see with the two, three techniques, the ones on the outside eye, uh, or I guess they're could be more of a four eye doesn't really matter on the outside uh, or excuse me inside eye of Taylor and then the uh, outside eye of Tooney they're going to pinch in and play the a gap so they're really looking to stop um, you know the a quarterback sneaker a gap runs here and really really gets off kilter as we talked about here with this linebacker kind of looks like he's going to come through this gap here and that's where it gets Creed Humphrey confused because um, instead of him coming up and it looks like Creed is kind of aiming for him the Lions do something a little bit different Right. So this is an outside zone scheme uh, from a blocking standpoint, even though it's a jet sweep and they're handing it to a wide receiver and it's not, you know, a traditional running back outside zone. Um, it's outside zone rules um, for the offensive line. And, and Humphrey's responsibility is the uh, a gap to the right. That's the, the defender that shows in that gap. He's going to block him by rule. Um, and what the Lions do here is, as I just mentioned, they, they, they pinch that three technique into the A gap, but it appears, and of course, Jesse, as you and I were talking about before uh, the show, you know, we, we, we don't know. There could have been some sort of call between Smith and Humphrey uh, to where, say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and take this guy. You go ahead and, and take the guy over you. And in, in a, if it's a true zone scheme, then, then Humphrey's going to be at fault here as he chases number 55 and, um, as you watch Trey Smith here, he steps horizontal like he would block an outside zone, taking what's called a B step there. And then now you have an unblocked player in the A gap, which is a disaster. And we see it's a disaster here because that's the man that makes the tackle on Rasheed Rice there in the backfield. So um, I, I know a lot of people criticizing the the play call that the Chiefs had and, and what goes on here, but I do want to talk about the execution because, Brett, I mean, you know, as a, as a former coach, um, so much of the time you hear afterwards, bad play call and it doesn't work, or you 
think in your mind, I'm sure as an offensive coordinator, you made bad play calls and they go for 70 yard touchdowns. And you think great job players, that sort of thing. When coaches talk about execution, that's what we're talking about. If the chiefs get this blocked up, they probably get the one yard, but for some reason that whatever reason, uh, the miscommunication, whether uh, Creed wasn't in the right spot, whether they didn't get the thing communicated, right. Uh, this was an execution problem on the front end and would have worked if they could have gotten those things kind of squared away. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, you know, as you said, it's, it's executing fundamentals and key times. And, and, you know, it, it, it of course looks awful. You know, you, you've got third and one here. Every, everybody's thinking, you know, obviously you can see Detroit, they see Belgin under center. They're thinking Q sneak, Q sneak, here we go. Uh, but for some reason, um, you know, the chiefs didn't want to, you know, try to move forward with that. Um, and, and they hand the ball here um, on the jet sweep. And, and obviously, um, you know, don't get a couple of guys blocked on the front side. We saw a gap penetration, even if they get that a gap, um, you know, solidified there. Jawan Taylor has a tough time, um, you know, with, with, um, you know, the guy he's uh, responsible for as well. And you mentioned too, just some of the play design aspect of this, it's tough for Rushy Rice too, from where he's standing to come get the ball and then also get to the outside. So maybe a little bit of um, play design uh, issues here too, for the chiefs as well, where they're trying to figure out something different on a short yardage situation. Right. Um, so yeah, a little bit more detail on that, Jesse. When when you run outside zone out of the shotgun, um, you, usually the quarterback's five yards deep in the back. Even if his, his you know he's on the front toes of the quarterback, is going to be almost five. And what that allows for is a little bit of, um, you know, I guess uh, it gives them a little bit more opportunity to outrun any front side penetration, any a get penetration on the front side because they're, they're they have more depth. But as you see here, as we roll the sideline, Rashi Rice is only going to be about three and a half yards. The ball's on the 34. He's going to be right at the 31. And now he's at the, you know, 30 and a half yard line. So if he – well, would it make a difference? Probably not. But it might, it might give him a chance to be able to outrun and at least get uh, – follow McKinnon out to the edge there and, and have a chance to get the first down. One other note I wanted to bring up. We watch this whole thing play through. And you watch Creed Humphrey after this play. He's pretty upset. Um, again, we can't know exactly what it is, but we see his frustration here at the end, whether it's himself, whether it's the blocking assignment, but whatever it is, the offensive line did not get that thing blocked the way they wanted to. And the Chiefs, once again, faced a short yardage situation where they didn't come through. Yeah, and, and it's it's become a pattern. You know, it's it's something, you know, that, that obviously is, and I don't know if it's in their heads a little bit, but they it, it just feels like it's a lot harder for them to pick up third and fourth and shorts and it is for really any other good team in the NFL. We'll continue to see if they improve on this and if there's better execution next week. But uh, until then, we'll watch these details and see if they improve from week one to the end of the season as the Chiefs try to repeat as Super Bowl champions. That's going to wrap it up for the details. For Brett, this is Jesse. Be sure to tune in for another episode next week.